Today we're talking about mindset and you know right thinking can enable you and wrong thinking can disable you. Write that in the chat. It's amazing what you won't do if you think that you can't do it. You know, I have a friend who told me her mother stayed with her dad. He was an alcoholic for over 30 years. She never worked. She spent all, he spent all the money on alcohol. And my friend, the daughter, would take ketchup from Hardee's and make tomato soup with hot water because they were that broke. But in the mom's mind, she never worked a day in her life and she thought she never could. And, you know, I had another friend who is, was being abused by her significant other and she just kept coming back. And even after he sent her to the hospital, she still doesn't want to report him. And I have another friend who told me her mother knew her dad was sexually abusing them when they were younger. And she, the mother just continued to allow it. And the reason was because she mentally thought that she couldn't physically take care of the kids because she didn't, she didn't work. And so she allowed the sexual abuse to continue. And so it's really important that we realize how much our thoughts and actions, our attitudes, our moods, our thoughts affect everything. They're literally the forerunner for everything that we do and everything we don't do. And so today I want to get your mind off of the past and what happened before. Let go of all the lies that you've been telling yourself for all these years and focus on a healthy mindset. And so first thing I want to talk about is, do you know where your mindset came from? Like, what is your mindset? Like, where did it come from? Put it in the chat right now. Well, your mindset is how you view the world. So where you get your mindset from is four areas. The first one is, write this down, the people you hang out with. We all know the phrase, one bad apple can spoil the bunch. And I know you've been a part of a group where one person's been really negative. It's affected everyone in the group. And uh, I have this wood basket that we hold all of our fruit in. And I literally have to watch it every day. I tell the girl that does our house, I'm like, please watch this every day because if literally one lemon goes bad, everything around it goes bad. And I, you know, I didn't know where this phrase came from. And it's actually based in science. Like when, when an apple or fruit begins to decay, they, it actually emits gases. And if the rotting fruit is mixed with a, other fruit, the good fruit can absorb these gases and begin to rot too. And I've seen that with people in our company, like they've been very positive, positive, and they start hanging out with people who are negative and they start start seeping in that negativity. My husband always says, he said, have you ever noticed that all your friends are super thin? And I'm like, well, that's not exactly true. But a lot of my friends, they are thin. And the reason is because I always interview people who are thin. So I start hanging out with people like that. But I want to hang out with people who are like-minded. So either my friends are thin or maybe they're not in the best shape they want to be in, but they want to be healthy. They don't want to overeat. They want to work out, um, you know, and, or if they're not in great shape right now, they're working hard to get there. Um, I have a friend of mine who is a billionaire. Well, he's close to a billionaire. I don't think he's a billionaire yet, but he literally takes lots of vacations and I've just kind of been watching him and he takes a lot of mini vacations to kind of recharge his battery. And just by me being friends with him, I've kind of watched and you know, I'm a worker. I like work, 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 work. It, it's pulling teeth to get me to not work. And so, but I've tried to start taking more mini vacations, maybe like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And I'm, I actually still work when I'm on vacation, but it actually has me when I go away, it gives me a clearer mindset when I'm on my laptop in the sun in a different atmosphere. I get new ideas, I new things come to me. So just by hanging out with him, it's something that I learned. Number two, it's another piece of how you get your mindset is just how you're wired naturally, like with your personality type. So what I'd like you to do right now is type in what is your disc score in the chat right now? So if you're an I personality, you're going to tend to be more happy, more jovial. It's just how God created you. But if you're a high C, 
you're going to analyze things a little bit more. So you need to know what your personality type is. And the third one is just taking a look at how you are raised. You get so much of your mindset by how you are raised. Like, did you grow up with a family where they were glass half empty? Or did you have a family that was a glass half full, right? If you're raised in a blue collar family, you might say something like, mom, can I get this? Mom, can I get that? And you might've heard your mom always say, "Mm, I'm sorry, honey, but we just can't afford it. Can I get this? No, we can't afford it. I have a friend right now that was raised in a family where all he did was hear from his family We can't afford it. We can't afford it. He now makes over $50,000 a month in passive income. He has over 80 rental properties paid for in cash. And he said he wanted a bigger house on the water, but he feels like he has a ton of money in the bank. But his mindset is still saying he can't afford it. So how do we fix it, right? So the first step is to recognize what areas you're weak in your mindset. You know, so for me, it's still, I have to work on my mindset with food. So when I was younger, I had this mindset that when I was sad, food was going to help me feel better. So my mom would be like, oh, you've had a bad day, sweetie. Let's go to TCBY yogurt. Now, if you are younger than me, you probably don't know what TCBY is, but it's just like sweet frogs or red mango or any frozen yogurt shop. And TCBY stands for the country's best yogurt. But my mom trained me. She's like, oh, you don't feel good? Let's go to TCBY. So now when I'm at work and I'm having a bad day, this is happening, that's bad happening. I have to say to myself, no, we aren't going in the snack drawer and having a a snack. Like I'm not doing it. I'm only using food for physical fuel for my body and that's it. The second one is to equip yourself by listening to things like this over and over. We're going to be doing four more talks like this. I hope you will join us for every one. But the third one is to change your self-talk. You have to literally replace every negative thought immediately with a positive one. When we have those discouraging thoughts, we have to instantly say, nope, I'm replacing it with a different thought. People who are the highest performers, they say, I'm going to discipline my mind so that the second I have that thought, I'm going to replace it with a positive thought. It's not that they never have a negative thought. They're just so restrained over their mind and they've retrained it. They're literally like, whoop, we're going to flip the switch. And they're making their automatic immediate thoughts and their impulses are now positive. I want you to write this down. You are replacing the lies to the truth. So if I say I'm stressed, immediately my first reaction is food will comfort me. That's a lie. The truth is food will actually make me more stressed and fat. And if I'm using food for any other reason than true hunger, I'm going to gain weight. So my mindset has to say, I only use food. I only use food for fuel. I'll never use it for comfort again, ever. So if I continue to replace that thought over and over and over again, then I'm going to replace it with positive thoughts. If every time you think, oh, a client doesn't want to work with me, you say, absolutely not. I have tons of people who love me that want to work with me, right? And if you actually think about your self-talk, you need to say them out loud. Because some of the things you say, like that guy I was telling you about that said, he's got $50,000 of, of money coming in every single month and he's saying he can't afford to move to a bigger house. Like he absolutely can. But you sometimes have to say it out loud because then you realize how ridiculous it is. So I want you to write in the chat right now, what is a lie that you say to yourself? Okay. I'll give you some examples to kind of, kind of give you some ideas. A lie would be, I'll go to the, I'll, a lie is I'll go to the gym tomorrow because I just can't do it today. A truth is no, I can do it today and I'll feel better after I work out. A lie is I don't have time to exercise. The truth is Yes, I can make time for exercise. I have to make it a priority. I can get up a little bit earlier every day. A lie would be, I'm too busy to get a healthy lunch. I'll just get fast food. 
No, it's worth it to take some extra time to get something healthy. It goes God, health, spouse, kids, and work. Uh, you know, I had a friend that was thinking about getting out of real estate and going into just doing teaching full time. And she's like, I don't know. I just feel like I I just am not making as much money as I want. And I was like, okay, how much money are, did you make this past year? And she was like, well, like 80000 I'm like, okay, so what, a, what are you going to make teaching? She was like, 41,000. And I was like, okay, so you now want to move to getting half of what you made this past year. She was like, but I just like the stability. Okay. But you like the stability, but you want to make half the money you made. Like it's just, sometimes people get these lies in their head and they just can't get out of them. You know, one girl said to me, she's like, I don't make enough money to save. Well, the truth is you, that's a lie. You can always save some amount, even if it's a small amount. You know, I hear people say, well, I know you're really big on giving and I think that's great. And I love how much you give. I'll give more once I I make more money. No, you won't because you're not giving it now. You know, Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will bring up, brim over with new wine. So, But let me talk to you right now about the number one thing that I feel people need to reset their mindset, and that is confidence. How do you get more confidence? I feel like, you know, right now with COVID, everybody is like, just their, their confidence is shaken. And, you know, when you're uncertain, you lack confidence, you don't make decisions. And I'm seeing more and more people changing their mindset from playing to win to playing not to lose. And, and that sounds subtle, but it's a big shift. Okay. I want you to write down, am I playing to win or am I just right now playing not to lose? You know, I have two friends that are different restaurant owners, one's Waterman's and one's Hot Tuna. Since COVID, I'm telling you, I'm so impressed with these businesses. They've like made markets, mini markets. They sell toilet paper. They sell paper towels. Like, did they ever sell toilet paper and paper towels before COVID? No. They sell fresh squeezed juice. They started, you know, Waterman's had this outside place. They started selling Christmas trees. They're like, we don't care. We're just going to be, you know, adding all these extra things when, when they made them shut down. And they were playing to win, not playing to lose, not to lose. And there's things in your life that are going to rob your confidence. And there's things that are going to support your confidence. And so you need to identify those. You need to say, what do I do that when I do this, I feel more confident? And, you know, I will tell you one of the things I actually have a friend who works at Keller Williams. And I have to limit my time with him because he'll say things to me like, "Mm, you have a great company, Chantel. He's like, you know, he'll give me props, you know, and then he'll be like, but you won't be able to come up. You won't be able to build a company as big or as good as Keller Williams. I call him my balloon popper because he'll give me some encouragement and tell me how wonderful the company is. But then he'll be like, but you won't ever build, build able something as big as Keller Williams. And I'm like, that's not true. You know, so I have to limit my time with them because that's just not good for my confidence. You know, I can't continue to hear that. And you need to watch what you fill your brain with. Do you know that I have not watched the news in 15 years? If you watch the news, say, yes, I watch the news. Or if you don't say, no, I don't. And here's why I've never once watched the news and been like, oh, wow, I feel amazing now. You watch the news and you're like, wow, our world is going to hell in a handbasket right this minute. Even through the pandemic, I just don't watch it. And you can say what you want about it, but I don't because I have to keep my confidence up and all that's going to do is bring my confidence down. Now, every day I listen to and read books and listen to, I don't really read books. Let me rephrase that. (laughs) I listen to books. I listen to podcasts to, to motivate me to take action. Um, you know, there's, these are some of the things that really kind of encourage me. And that is listening to podcasts. Now people say, I I listen to about two leadership podcasts and two sermons per day. And people are like, oh, I would never have time to do that. 
I would say, okay, well, I'm extraordinarily busy. I don't even know anyone who's quite as busy as I am. And honestly, I do it when I'm driving, when I'm putting on makeup, if I'm cleaning up, if I'm, you know, whatever I'm doing. When I go to the gym, I'm wearing my headphones. Even at at all times, I'm I'm listening. You know, if you've ever read the book, Who Moved My Cheese, it's a short book, but there's two mice and there's cheese being brought every day. And one day the cheese stops coming and one mouse says, "Mm, I'm just going to wait here until they bring my cheese back. And the other mouse says, well, I'm not sure if the cheese is coming back, so I'm going to go look for more. And so if you are craving another level of happiness, joy, abundance, wealth, you have to be listening to these things every day. I listen to four podcasts per day, every day. And you need to feel, figure out what builds your confidence. You know, when I just got back from Costa Rica, um, for the first couple of days I was there, I literally looked like who did it and forgot about it. I wore no makeup. I was wearing this slummy outfit. You know, I just looked like, oh, terrible. And, you know, I started eating a little bit more. I was eating, I wasn't eating as healthy as I wanted. I just felt really bummy. And finally I was like, oh, I've got to snap right out of this. So I went to the spa, I got my hair done, you know, I got my makeup done. I just started, all of a sudden I started eating healthier. Why? Because my confidence was back. Some of you are sitting at home and just not doing anything. Like if you're going to be at home for the day, it doesn't mean you can't put on an outfit and make yourself look good. If you're on a Zoom call, you know, get your hair done, put your, you know, look the part, act the part. You're going to feel more confident. Now, while I say that, I know a lot of you are going to be learning, but you're not doing. So what I say, write this down. Learning equals passive action. Doing equals massive action. I love the quote from James Clear. He has a book on habits. He says, we often avoid taking action because we think I need to learn more. But the best way to learn more is by taking action. When I was at William E. Wood at the mall, I'll tell you a quick story. So just so you know, my first year of real estate, I sold over 52 houses. The average real estate agent sells about three houses per year. I sold 52 my first year. And, you know, the the lady, I worked at William E. Wood at the mall and there was a kiosk there. And the girl said to me, I, was in tra- I wasn't out of training. I was just in the first week of training class. The girl said, well, we have somebody who canceled at the mall and we need someone to cover the kiosk. Is there any way you could cover it? And I was like, yeah, sure. She's like, are you out of your training? I was like, who cares? I can do it. She was like, are you sure? I was like, yeah, absolutely. I can do it. So I go there. I was there for five minutes and she told me, she said, now, whatever you do, don't leave the kiosk. And I was like, okay. So she said, only if you have to go to the bathroom and for a short amount of time. So this guy comes up. I wasn't even there five minutes. I don't, I was logging onto the computer. Guy walks up. He said, ma'am, do you know what time it is? I said, it's time for you to buy a house. He was like, well, actually I am looking. I said, well, can I pull up some houses for you right now? They had a computer right there. He said, sure. So he looked at him. He, it was like the third house I pulled up, maybe even the first. I don't know. I pulled up one. He's like, oh, I love that. I want to go look at it. I said, okay. So he, I said, let's go right now. I wrote a note on the, the thing on the kiosk, said, gone to the bathroom, be back soon. I wasn't allowed to do that. It is what it is. Took him in the car, showed him that one house. He said, I love it. I want to write an offer. Remember, I'm still in my first week of training, not even out of training. I was like, sure, let's go back to the office. I grabbed my broker. I was like, I called her on the way back to the office. I said, guess what? I'm writing an offer. She's like, what? You're not even out of training. I was like, that's okay. Here we go. It's a matter of, yes, we need to learn, but we have to take massive action. Well, it's almost January, and that means people are looking forward to a fresh start in 2021. And so if you're like half the population, you're looking forward to accomplishing your New Year's resolution. And a lot of you are saying, I want to lose weight and eat healthier in the new year. Well, here's the problem. Everyone's like, yes, yes, yes. The beginning of January, I'm going to be losing weight. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing that. And they don't do it. Well, here's why. A lot of people by not even February, they don't even make it till February and they've already lost sight of what their New Year's resolution goals are. So here's the deal. What you need is accountability, not necessarily knowledge. Think about it. I know I need to work out five days a week, 
But guess what? When I have a personal trainer, I work out, I'm always there. If I have a personal training appointment, I have a guy that I work with three days a week, I never ever miss. Now on Tuesday, Thursday, I have like a small group class that I go to. It's, if I'm there, I'm there. If I'm not, I'm not. But guess what? Every once in a while, I'll miss on Tuesdays and Thursday. But here's what you need. You have to get an accountability partner and you have to get an accountability group. That's why we're doing a 30-day detox. What is this 30-day detox? First, you're gonna name what your eating window is. So six hours, four hours, eight hours, you choose it. And we're gonna add in some different things. Maybe you wanna add in a 24 hour fast. Maybe you wanna add in a 48 hour fast. And we're going to eat a keto flex clean eating program. You're gonna have no sugar, no honey, no refined foods, but you can have up to half a cup of gluten-free grain if you need it or half a cup of fruit per day. So basically, you're doing keto-ish. It's a keto flex. We're just having really clean foods and it starts January 4th. And what is it gonna do for you? It's gonna help hold you accountable. You're gonna have an accountability partner, you're gonna have weekly meetings, and we are going to take your health to a new step. So if you wanna get 50% off, it's normally $60, it's only $30 for, that's a dollar a day for 30 days to have you be held accountable. We hope you join us. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash 30 day detox. We'll add it in the show notes. Another thing that we need to do is constantly fill your tank. The one, the number one thing I do to kind of fill my tank is to get massages. Cause you know, I don't relax well, I'm constantly on the go, but that really, really fills my tank. So I get a lot of massages. It's just one of those things. I know that the second I start feeling like, mm, am I in a rut? What am I doing that is not building my confidence? Am I doing too many things that are chipping away at my confidence? Now, I want you to write this down. You want to flex your courage muscle. There's things that you are not going to want to do, and it doesn't matter. You just have to say to yourself, I don't care if I want to do it or not. I'm going to flex my courage muscle. I'm so tired of people saying, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could do that. You know, I I do a lot of fasting. And so even when I tell someone, I'm like, oh, I'm doing a 24-hour fast or I'm doing a two-day fast or a three-day fast, people say, Oh, I could, I I have people, I say, I'm doing a six hour eating window. They're like, oh, there's no way I could ever do that. And I'm like, well, if you think you can't, you won't be able to. You have to flex your courage muscle. Things that you think that you can't do, just stop and say, you know what? I can do them. I'm going to fill my courage bank and I'm going to flex my courage muscle. But the precursor, listen, confidence is the precursor to courage. Like if you're not feeling confident, you're not going to have that courage to be able to do it. So you've got to fill that, that confidence muscle. Okay. Now I want to remind you that everyone says, okay, let's, let's write this down. When is the best time to plant a tree? If I said to you, when's the best time to plant a tree? What would you say? It's actually probably 10 years ago, right? But when's the second best time? Right now. You know, I have a podcast called Waste Away Through Intermittent Fasting, and it has over 185 downloads per month, but it stayed at like 40,000 for a really long time. And people forget there's a lot of things I've had to do to get to that point. And there's a lot of things I've had to do in general in life to get to where I am and I'm not where I want to be, you know, but everyone has success dues to pay. I want you to write that down. You know, in real estate, we pay around $600 to $800 in realtor dues, depending on what part of the country you live in. There's all kinds of dues that you have to pay. And I look back at my history and it's just been a roller coaster. I mean, honestly, like I've just had to pay so many dues. And when I say dues, I mean failures, like things that have gone sideways. And I think we look at other people and we think we look at them and you look at a top agent in this area or top agent in that area. And you just think, oh, they had success, success, success. And it's like, no, it's impossible to get what you have without going through what you had to go through. 
you know? And so you just remind yourself that everyone pays success dues. And I want to leave you with one last thought, and that is that I... This is something I'm working on, and I I hope that you do too, is that I'm constantly saying, because I'm such a goal person, that I finally had to say to myself, Chantel, who do you want to become? Not what I want to be, but who do you want to become? And it's not as much about what do you accomplish, but but who do you want to become? And I just started thinking like, you know, what kind of relationships do I want to have? What kind of mother do I want to be? What kind of leader do I want to be? And I always tell you this, 10 people in life are going to hate you. 10 people in life are going to absolutely love you. And 10 people don't care one way or another about you, right? No matter how amazing you are, I don't care how perfect you are. There's always going to be 10 people who love you, 10 people who hate you, 10 people who don't care one way or another about you. And so, you know, that's, that is a peace of mindset that you have to always remind yourself when someone's, you know, saying something about you. And, but, but you do always want to ask yourself, who is it that I want to become? And I want to tell you a few things, you know, I always start my day spending time with God. I start with the Bible app. I listen to a sermon. I listen to a leadership podcast. I go to the gym every morning, at least six times a week. Um, I do the vibration plate. I go in the sauna. I write in my journal. I do coconut pulling. You know, there's there's some routines that I've created that I literally don't even think about. And so I'd love for you guys to, you know, think about some different things of, of A, who do I want to become? And then who do I, what do I want to accomplish? And, you know, I listened to a podcast with the owner of Spanx, and this is kind of some of the things that podcasts do when you're listening to them. But I found out that the owner of Spanx was the first woman billionaire that didn't inherit it or her husband didn't, you know, isn't the one who inherited it um, and left it to her. But I was like, you know what? I think my goals are too small. Like I want to be the second billionaire woman who did it without her husband, not without her inheritance, and just live on, you know, maybe a hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars a year and just give the rest of it away. You guys all know my goal is to live on 10% of my income and give 90% away. But I had to make a plan. That's that's what I wanted to do. That's how I wanted to create my future. But it all of that and all of these ideas came from self-development. You know, my husband and son, this is so funny the other day, because I was literally like, it was like on my eighth podcast for the day. And finally, my husband looked at me. He was kind of mad. He was like, do we have to always be in self-development mode or can we just chill? I said, no, we have to always be in self-development mode. And I'm a little bit over the top. So, you know, I can get a little crazy with it, but I probably could encourage you guys to move that needle a little bit over. So here's what I want you to do. I want to kind of think about yourself and think about what your dreams are, what your goals are. And I want you to think about, do you have your goal anchored in something that's bigger than yourself? You know, because it's like, for me, it's like, okay, if I want to make this much money, I don't want to make this much money just because I want to, you know, have this or have that. Because it's it's about giving it away. And when you say, I want to be a blessing to other people, that's how you are able to kind of have a bigger goal for yourself. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. You're going to create a personal mission statement. I want you to write down mine just so you can keep it in the top of your head. My personal mission statement is to grow people in a closer and deeper walk with God through healthy living and real estate. So now you have to create your own, but you want to kind of, you can use that to think about, okay, what, what is it that I want, you know? And I want you to write this down. I want you to create business, 
financial goals, family goals, health goals, spiritual goals, personal goals, leadership goals, and servanthood goals. And we'll be working on them, you know, over and over and over. But here's the biggest thing I want to encourage you. You know, at our company, one of the things that we used to do is we'd have accountability meetings um, that we would have people do every week. And, you know, people were like, it was actually required if you wanted to have leads with our company. If you didn't want leads, you didn't have to, but if you wanted leads, you did. And what happened was people were like, I don't like that. I'm an independent contractor. I want to do my own thing. And we we're like, okay, that's fine. We're going to make it where it's optional. You don't have to do it. And we just had a, a, we kind of fell it off. That just kind of fell off. And the truth is, if I go to the gym and I know my personal trainer is waiting, I, I go to the gym in like a small group, but a couple times a week, I like to do a personal trainer. I don't care if I feel like going or not. I'm there because I know I have someone holding me accountable. And my wish for you, we're going to be starting back weekly accountability meetings. I'm going to be leading them off. And my encouragement for you is for you to attend every single one, no matter what happens, not making an excuse, not saying I'm not doing this. You're just saying, yep, I'm going to hold an accountability meeting. I'm going to go there no matter what. I'm going to take it to the next level because it's not about learning more. You know, people are like, oh, I need to learn more. I need to learn more. No, you have to take action. And the way that you take action is by having people around you hold you accountable. This has been a Sempronto Media Production.